Gruesome Magazine. Lynn, how are you? I'm very good today. It's beautiful. Lynn Lowry. <laughs> I can't believe I'm talking to the one and only Lynn Lowry. This is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we're here mainly to talk today about your current release, which is out now from Breaking Glass Films called A Halloween Feast. And oh my God, Lynn, this movie. Wow. Uh, I, I'm going to call it a dark comedy. Do you feel that that's a, an accurate representation? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's kind of <laughs> hard to exactly say what it is, but dark comedy sounds pretty accurate. So what did you, when they approached you about this film, what did you think? You, I'm assuming you read the treatment or read the script first. Yeah. What did you think of this character that they were presenting you with? Well, I, you know, Gil, the director, Gil Bronco, um, contacted me. I'd never met Gil. Someone recommended me through a friend to him, and he just called me up and, you know, told me about it, and then he sent me the script, and I, I thought, wow, this is pretty bizarre. Um, <laughs> but I wasn't sure at that point, you know, exactly who that character was that that he wanted me to play. I mean, I my mind always goes, you know, more to the crazy, psychotic kind of, you know, um, people. And uh, when I talked to him about it, you know, he said, oh, no, she, she's kind of like Donna Reed, you know, and Leave it to Beaver or Loretta Young, you know. And I thought, oh, that, that's very interesting. And then, you know, the contrast between that character and the killer character was really fascinating to me. And you and it's funny you would mention that because that's exactly what I was thinking. I was thinking, oh, boy, this is like a, a, a Mrs. Cleaver type of character only the problem is she actually has a cleaver so that's a you know that's right. <laughs> that's kind yeah. of an issue for most of the people in this film uh, where was where was this filmed was this filmed uh in the states or was this oh, international no it was filmed in los angeles oh it was great i mean it is a, a ton of a, a ton of bloody fun i, I don't know how else to, to describe this i mean it's called a halloween feast and every the whole film kind of leads up to this dinner party <laughs> yeah. at the end of the film the halloween uh, dinner. Yeah. yes the halloween dinner and uh i i have to tell you although your character is amazing and your amazing grandma was just killing me wasn't she yeah she was she crazy. yeah what, what who who was she and what was her name i meant to look uh, her up and i forgot but gosh, boy was she good in this her name her first name is mary and i honestly i I'm really bad with names. So I, I am too, and I'm trying to find her in here, and she was so good, and I apologize. I will look it up and put it in the uh, the recording notes here because she's exceptional in this and, and it actually plays a pretty large part. She passed away this past year. Oh, that's seriously. Yeah, she was in her 90s. Wow. Uh, she worked out with Gil. Gil uh, does a lot of, you know, workout stuff with people, a trainer kind of in his spare time. And he worked with her and helped her. And she was, you know, very lively on the set and everything. So we were really surprised and saddened when we lost her. She did get to see the film, though. So I was very happy about that. Oh, it just breaks my heart to hear that. But she was so exceptional in this. So what a legacy she left with nothing else just with this role, right? Yeah, that was the only film she ever did. She was a writer and an artist and uh, a lot of, lot of different things, <clears throat> you know. That's a, and uh, Gil, although he he directed and wrote this, I believe, or at least co-wrote it, he also stars in this, right? He's Mark in this movie. Yes, yes. He yeah. Is. So he had he has his imprint all over this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's he's great. Got, he's wonderful, Gil. He's one of the most optimistic, charming, handsome, you know, kind people I've ever met and worked with on a set and everyone on the set, the crew and the cast, everyone just adored him. He was always wonderful. And he looks good in a dinosaur suit. So he's got that going for him. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he does. <laughs> and I know that's going to sound very confusing to anyone who hasn't, uh, hasn't seen the movie yet, but right. uh, exactly. yeah, you know, it, it, that's also just part of the, uh, the madness and the brilliance uh, of this movie. Um, I, I know in the course of your career, you've worked a lot with uh, practical effects, special effects. Were you asked to do anything in this film that was unique that you have not had to uh, uh, do in the past? 
Um, yeah, uh, on my first day, uh, I had to uh, screw the wine cork screw into her head. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and then pull it out. And I'd never done that before, so that was a that was a brand new thing. And and the funny thing was, we they had like two heads to do it with. Oh, they had three, I think. And the first two, it just didn't pull out right. And um, the third one, you know, everyone was like really hoping it was going to work, you know. And of course, I was really hoping it was going to work because I was doing it, and I would have felt terrible if it didn't work. But the last one actually worked, and when I pulled it out, it came out with some of her brains and stuff like that. So Everything came out like it was supposed to, huh? It did, yes. <laughs> I thought for sure you were going to say that. How do I say this without spoiling it for anybody? Uh, the uh, arterial bidet. That was a new one on me. I'd never seen that done before. <laughs> uh the, yeah, so uh, we'll we'll leave that one at that. But I, I figured that's where you would go with that because I've never seen that in a film before. The uh, which one? Uh, when uh, how do I, I don't want to I don't want to spoil it for anybody, Lynn. But when you're standing over a victim, and the blood is uh, is kind of squirting oh, uh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> into a private yeah. area, shall we say? Yes, yes. <laughs> that was a, you know without giving giving that away, as you said, um, when Gil that wasn't in the script. And so Gil came up to me one day and he said, Lynn, in his, you know, Brazilian accent, you know, he said, I've got this great idea, you know, and what do you think of? And then he told me the idea and I was like, okay, <laughs> I wasn't quite exactly sure how to do that because I had never, never done that before. So yeah, I, 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 I'm not sure it's ever been done ever before that I've ever seen. Yeah, so that was, so that, that was a fun one. Yeah. Uh, so how long, uh, what was the filming like on this? How long was the, was the actual uh, filming? Was it a long shoot? Was it like rapid fire, like guerrilla indie style? Well, no, it was pretty indie. I mean, it was about three weeks. So, you know, I've been on indies that have been like two days. So sure. three weeks is, is actually pretty long. And Absolutely. I staying with my brother in Reseda. So they would come and get me and, and take me to the set, which was somewhere in LA, which was about an hour away. I could, couldn't tell you where, I'm terrible with stuff like that. It just <laughs> drove me there and I acted, so. Uh, it, well, it's a, it's, it's, it's a great role for you, it really is. Uh, you're yeah. in this film a lot. Uh, and uh, I thought your character was great. I thought you were brilliant in your portrayal of her. You kind of uh, made her your own. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what Gil had in mind, but I he can't be more pleased with uh, with what you gave him because it's it's a brilliant performance. Thank you. I um, you know I was really excited about doing the role because you know she's not sometimes you know and it's fine. But like in Fang, I don't know if you've seen Fang. But of course, I won a lot of awards for that. But and I and I'm, I I love my performance in it. But and I look exactly like I should look but I'm not very attractive in it. So in this film, I got to be kind of young again and uh, look good and have sexy stuff and just be, you know, a different, different thing than I've played in quite a long time. And that was really exciting to me to get to do that. I mean, and you've never shied away in your entire career, you know, no. which dates back into the 70s. The nudity and the sexuality was always a, a, a big part of your performance. Right. And, and, and again, you're a, amazing uh, with that in this as well. The, the sensuality mm -hmm. and, the, you know, it, it's, it, it, it rings true. It really, truly mm -hmm. does. Uh, the, 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 the bedroom scene with your husband in the film was was fan his reaction to your strip tease was brilliant. Yeah, he, he was great, James. He was wonderful. I that we did so we did so many takes of that and honestly I thought the ones that they picked were not the ones I thought they would pick. But um there were so many just hysterical. Everyone was just laughing and laughing. But you know, they picked what they thought would be the best and it's, sure. it's great. It does. Uh, did you have you seen the complete film? Did this get any type of a theatrical uh, yeah, well, release at all? We had a premiere of it in um, L.A. Um, and uh, in uh, Beverly Hills, and then I think it played there for about a week, 
And so and now it's out on all of the streaming platforms, you know, and everything. So I'm hoping yeah, every, every, more people will, will watch it. Well, for, for gore fans, it's bloody. Uh, for practical effects fans, uh, other than I think I maybe one scene over a gas burner with somebody lighting a fire, it looked like it was pretty much all practical effects. I think that's the only CGI <laughs> I seen was that was that uh, burner uh, scene. Uh, so all practical effects, very bloody, very, very uh, unique kills. And the amazing Lynn Lowry. I mean, what more can you ask for? It's everything. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't mind, Lynn, real quickly, I know we're supposed to be talking about uh, Halloween feast real quickly, but I would be very remiss if I uh, didn't speak with you about your uh, your amazing career. Uh, you have worked with Lloyd Kaufman. You've worked with George Romero. You've worked with David Cronenberg. I have to imagine, I mean, back in those days, back in the 70s, you didn't know that they were going to end up being a George Romero or a David Cronenberg. You... <laughs> so looking back now, what, I mean, how does that... What are your what are your musings on that? Well, I mean, I at that time uh, did not know, have any idea. I also worked with Jonathan Demme, who won the Academy Award for Silence of the Lambs. In wow! Fighting what Mad. what fil what film did you do do with him? I, I that one slipped past me. Fighting Mad with Peter Fonda. I was I played his girlfriend. I co-starred in that with with Peter. Wow, that's and, amazing. Uh, and also, oh, Cat People with Paul Schrader. Of course, yeah. But, uh, you know, it was like I was in New York and I was a struggling actor and I was just trying to get anything I could get. And uh, I was up for a, a role in uh, Cannon's Joe with Peter Boyle um, that I think Brian De Palma or John Avelson. I, I can't remember which one. One of them was directing it. And Lloyd was a PA on it or something, and he saw me in the waiting room, and he ran over and he said, "Oh my God, uh, you know, and Lloyd, I, uh, you, you'd be perfect as a dream girl in my short film that I'm doing, and we're not paying anything, but we'd love to have you." <laughs> and so that was how I met Lloyd. And then, you know, with George, he had already done um, *Night of the Living Dead* when I worked with him, but I had never seen it, and I didn't know, you know that he changed the whole zombie world, you know, and uh, uh, and with Cronenberg, it was his first, first film, and, you know, I just sort of thought that these would be stepping stones, you know, to learn more about, you know, how to make films and go on to, you know, winning the Academy Award, you know. Of maybe. course. But it turns out that those films, actually, I Drink Your Blood, uh, which is very well shot and done and cast. You know, they they are all like the this the bottom support of everything I do today. I mean, I wouldn't be acting today if it wasn't for those films and that the fact that they have such a legacy and that people still know them and remember them. So I'm thrilled I'm in them and I love them. They're all wonderful, you know, to see. You just have to see them remembering they're in the seventies and there's right. different you know, a different aspect you have to look at them with. So, yeah, yeah it, it, it really is. Uh, you know, a lot of times you just don't realize it at the time because, like you said, Romero, you know, he'd made Night of the Living Dead, but he wasn't the icon he is now. No. And the same with Cronenberg. No. You know, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's fascinating. You do a lot of conventions, I believe. I do. I mean, I do like maybe five or six a year. Um, yeah, you know, which is great. any 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 coming up that uh, that you'd um, like to I plug? Have, gosh, I have one in Pennsylvania, which I think it's the Pennsylvania Tattoo and Horror Convention. Mm -hmm. And then I'm doing also um, a Cinema Wasteland in 2025 in April, and we're having a little reunion of uh, two of the ladies and me from my Drink Your Blood. It's our 55th anniversary for that so Rhonda Fultz and Elizabeth Brooks will be there with me for that show that's amazing and that's like I'm in Cleveland so that's oh, I mean yeah to come by you know Rhonda I will actually in she was in in cold blood she has a wonderful little scene where she discovers uh, the bodies and, mm -hmm. and Elizabeth has been in a, a, couple, a couple of other films so it's exciting to get to see them. We've done Cinema Wasteland once before 
for the 50th anniversary. So this is oh, that's great. It's a great convention. Uh, I wanted to touch on also, I believe this year I looked at IMDb quickly before we started recording, and I think you have, you had four or five movies this year coming out? Um, yeah, gosh. Uh, uh, a Halloween yeah. feast, of course, being one of them. Right. Um, Torch of the Flesh is coming out, I know. Uh, gosh. <laughs> it's just so many. I mean, it's amazing how prolific you are. I mean, this is absolutely great. I even seen one for 2025, a short film that it says that you're attached to or working on. Um, I I did 12 film projects this year. Wow. So I, I don't remember what so I did busy. last year. It's yeah. coming out, but, you know. But, you know, I, I always give 100%. And, and if you watch a Halloween feast, I get to do those S&M scenes. Which, yes. You know, I think I look pretty good in those outfits. I, I think you look better than pretty good in those <laughs> outfits. I'll tell you what. Uh, yeah, so a Halloween feast. It's out now from Breaking Glass Pictures. It's on VOD. Highly recommend you check it out. Uh, it's such a such a, an oddly fun movie. Yes. You know, it really, truly is. Lynn, I cannot thank you enough for taking a little time out of your day today to sit and chat with me. My pleasure. Thank you for asking. Absolutely. Gruesome Magazine.